Hey guys, Jason here, Traditional Boating Wilderness Podcast. Today we're going to talk for a second about picking a spot. Okay, this is just a simple reminder for you, but, um, you know, when I was just in my Midwest trip, um, you know, I ended up killing three deer and I, uh, I missed four deer when I was out there. And uh, you miss a deer, especially as an instinctive bow hunter, by not picking a spot. You guys that are gap shooters, and you can take your arrow and you can offset that and you can line that up or you do all that string walking or you anchor down here and you look way down the arrow shaft you guys have an, a, a reference point of aiming okay there's an aiming system to that that's what you've developed is that that sort of a actual aim type method and it works for you but you come back and you either anchor way up here um, or like I said you put that gap way down here and you can string walk above that or whatever your method is you guys have an aiming system us as instinctive shooters we don't aim anything we stare at a spot we want to shoot and then we turn our cell phone off hang on let's make sure it's nobody important um, that was Matt Steed. Matt, I'll call you back in just a few minutes. Um, but, uh, so, what, well, us, when we shoot, we don't, you don't see, if you watch people shoot, the difference is they come in and they, they do this and they come in and they gap and they line up and they do this kind of thing and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not taking anything away from it. Honestly, I believe that people are probably way more accurate if they gap shoot than they ever do instinctive or anything like that. They just do a much better job at it uh, because they have that aiming system to them. Those of us that are instinctive shooters, we're never going to change. Okay, I'm never going to be a gap shooter. I'm never going to be a string walker. I'm never going to be a three under guy. I'm never going to be any of that. I'm going to always be an instinctive shooter. Um, and as an instinctive shooter, what happens for us is we are different. Okay, we don't we don't see the deer come up, draw in, and then line up where we need to be, and then fire. We don't do that. Ours is you watch my eyes. This is how it's done right here. Boom, I lock on the spot I want to shoot, and then I shoot it, okay? Nothing else changes. I don't move, I don't readjust, I don't nothing. I lock on, stare at what I want to hit, and I shoot it. And so when you do that, as an instinctive shooter, we pick a spot. If you can't pick a spot, you have nothing to aim at, and you end up aiming at the entire outer edges of the body. You end up aiming at, your eyes are drawn to the line. Okay, so imagine it like this. If I bring my finger in, or I, I, I bring this in, and I point right there, you're focusing right on the end of my finger. But as soon as you lose focus on the end of my finger, you're going to be drawn to the edges of my knuckles, my thumb, all this stuff. The second you take your eye off the tip of my finger, your eye is going to wander to those edges. And that's exactly what happens to us. Now, we will pick a spot when we start, when we're deer hunting. We will come in and pick a spot. We'll be like there, but then we still got to look. And if you watch my eyes, they kind of go like this. It's like, here's a spot I want to hit. And I come in and I get set, but then is, is he looking? Is he okay? How's his body language? Is he still turned? You start letting, you lose that focus on that fingertip, on that spot. And then you start looking at the edges and you end up shooting over top or you shoot underneath. It's part of the game. It's the reality of it. So what I've been practicing a lot since I've been back from that Midwest trip I've been shooting like four times a day, you know, 20, 25 arrows a time. But every single shot I fire is like this, okay? It's not a group. It's not nothing. We've talked about this before. But I am picking a spot and focusing on it every single second. I am holding focus. And then I'm actually shifting focus and coming back to focus. I'm doing a bunch of things. So like for these shots here, okay, I picked this spot. Okay, this spot was easy to identify because it's this whole little clump. That's what I wanted. This clump right here of this brown among all this was an easy spot to pick. On here it was real easy because I wanted to go just above the corner of that flaked off part. On here it was a spot that I wanted to pick. Uh, that upper uh, upper hole right here. This one was what I was aiming at. These were all from about 18 yards. Um, so nothing crazy. But what I wanted to do here, what I've been trying to do is... is Pick my spot, draw and come in, and then lose focus. Then just let focus go, okay, and then bring it back. Shoot, okay. That little drill has been, I'm hoping, is going to help me later on because, you know, most of my misses are either from buck fever or loss of focus. That's, that's really what it comes down to. And when I miss, I miss big. I very seldom miss little. I miss big. Um, you know, all the way under, all the way over. What I should say is, I, let me rephrase it. I should say I don't wound a lot um i don't i'm never off just a little bit 
and it's very rarely left or right. Usually I'm, I'm you know, I miss underneath because I lost focus and I shot at the bottom edge in that corner pocket, or I shoot over top because I lost focus and I'm staring at the top edge from a tree stand. Um, this drill hopefully will change that because what I'm realizing is that I'm lock and focus but then I have to give focus up for a minute to make sure that that animal's still in a clear shooting lane is there any sticks in the way is he moving through is he looking away I have to actually pay attention to what he's doing and it takes that focus off that fingertip for a second and then I'm not bringing it back and when I shoot I'm shooting at that okay I come in focus there and then I look at the edges and I shoot at the edges we need to correct that so how have I been doing it I've been doing it like I said I'm coming in I am locking on focus and then I'm breaking focus and then I'm locking focus again then I'm shooting um, so it, it is happening quick but what it's doing for me is it is making sure that the second before that arrow goes off I have re-engaged my focus so I'm going from here to here back to there shooting and that is what my intention is here it is to lock on that spot draw it back lose focus for a second, relock it and shoot it. It's been working tremendously. I've been shooting better than I ever have. It's been absolutely excellent. And then when I'm not doing that, I am just making sure I am focusing on picking a spot. So little simple tip for you, but I promise you, if you are an instinctive shooter and you don't have all that aiming stuff going on, which again, I'm not knocking it. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I promise you. Um, but if you're an instinctive shooter, that picking a spot is that crucial. Even for your gap shooters and stuff, you got to pick that spot and line it up. But it's, it's a lot easier. It's almost like a sight pin. For us, as instinctive, if we do not make that mental note of that spot, we shoot at the animal because we never see our bow. We never see that arrow. We're not paying attention to it. People are like, well, you got to see it. It's right there. I really don't got to see it. I really do not have to see this under any circumstances. I never look at it. I'm right here. I draw in. I want to shoot that spot. I shoot. I come back. I lock in and I shoot. I never once look at that arrow. It's not there. It's not in my peripheral. It's not that I pay attention to it. I never see it. There's where I want to hit. I come back. Never once do I look or even think about that arrow. Okay. But if I don't continually focus on that spot, all of this doesn't matter because my mind is not locked on. And my mind is what we're aiming with. So if you are an instinctive shooter, little tip for you. Practice your pick a spot because it's very important and we do that a lot. Pick a spot, pick a spot, pick a spot. You see people write it on their bowls all the time, pick a spot. But if you want to take that one step further, practice picking a spot, letting it go, gathering it again, and then shooting. And it can be done very quickly. But it's a, it's a big factor. But remember, we need... To shoot that, not that. So, thanks for watching.